Hi, it's Yuris and today let's do some tips and tricks on how to take good pictures and how they look in portfolios. Let's start on how to make good pictures. Most of you probably have smartphones and you are watching this on that great machine right now. And smartphones these days take pretty good pictures. So the main thing would be light and that light can be anything. It can be big studio lights, just good lights on the ceiling and it can be some smaller lights. They maybe have to be closer but make sure that they are not some crazy color so it doesn't make things look weird. If you don't have any bigger lights, you always have windows and just get your subject closer to the window, take a picture or if you work in some basement kind of situation then if you can manage it without breaking too many hygiene rules that just get the person outside, snap a picture, get them back in, cover and it's all good. So the main thing for getting a good picture would be more or less good phone. I would say all right phone but if you have one of these fancy last year's new phones like Last iPhone, Samsung's, they do very good job without, without light that good. And if you have like a DSLR kind of thing, then you are open for more options. So let's quickly talk about DSLRs and there's few things to know. So if you have one and you don't know really how to use it, or you just bought one, or you're looking to buy one. So there would be a lot of stuff about lenses and one of them would be focal length. So that's the numbers which goes, which goes in millimeters and you don't want it, that number to be too big because if it's too zoomed in, you have to be very far from your subject and it might be hard or weird to take pictures or might, you might not have space and if the number is, is too low and lens is too wide then it might distort things so some faces might look funny some some details can stretch out and the next thing on lenses would be f-stop and that's the number which is goes from one point something at, up to like 20 that's the f-stop and that just means lower the number more light that lens can let into camera and that means it will better perform in low light and also when you shoot at the low number which means it's more open it gives you that fancy artistically blurry background here's some examples of that on a pretty common focal length check these out and pay attention how things change in the background so you can see more focused background and then it gets more blurry more blurry and more blurry and that not just only looks nice but it can work in your in your favor when you want to hide some things in background and that slowly leads us into next part how things look in portfolios so like i mentioned background background can be one of those things that can mess up your portfolio because there can be some funny stuff on the background. It can be mess. I've seen some pictures where some random vacuum cleaners or there can be some other customer being in pain in the background and doing weird faces or something. Or maybe your friend is checking out and being all curious on what's going on. That weird stuff in the background can distract someone who's looking at that picture so bad that they will forget what's the main reason of that, of that picture and they will just like be excited or entertained by that thing on the background so that's when that blurry background comes in handy so one way would be with a dslr and shoot with wide aperture and 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 get that background blurry that way and those new phones have that feature built in and you can achieve those blurry backgrounds with too much hustle it's like a built-in function so funny background can be one thing that will mess up your picture and if you don't have a chance to like blur it out or you don't have clean background and make sure it's not seen. So maybe take those pictures closer to, to your subject, what, what you are taking picture of. I know that many shops have dedicated areas just, just for taking pictures. So it can be like a, just a white wall, or maybe it's some fancy wallpaper, or maybe it's like a favorite flash pieces on a wall. So that makes that portfolio look really good and it makes all that background consistent. And once you see that picture in the background, you're like, oh, it's pictures from them guys. In one of the shops we worked, we found a great solution that was like a doorway wide enough. And then we put these things up, which is a window blind. And we had two of those window blinds. We had one black, one white, so we could choose the color if we felt like it and have white or black background. And now in the piercing room, I use white window blind thing as a backdrop. And, and you can check it out how it looks with that white background. And what different it makes when it's not there and you can see how background looks now. And for piercings, there's a pretty good light in that room, but sometimes when it's some piercings on the face, I use this little guy. And it's just a small ring light that clips on any phone. 
and it's also known as a beauty light and it gives you that even light over the face and if you get it close enough you get those white circle reflections in eyes and that looks very professional also when taking pictures of close-up things and especially faces a little white lies little photo editing doesn't doesn't harm anyone like if you see some crazy pimple or you made a nose piercing and there's some ha hair sticking out of somebody's nose and that gets in a way that gets in the picture just edit it out so it looks all nice clean and fancy enough with the technical stuff about photography and back to portfolios what can look and not look so good in them and now that i'm more talking about online portfolios because that's what we most of the time see so it's some uh, instagram pages or maybe facebook pages because that's how you check out people these days and often some people send them in as uh, when they're looking for work or some people then just sending and say like oh check it out my portfolio and tell what you think about it so what's the stuff that would be good to avoid in portfolio so one thing would be that messy background that i already mentioned and next thing would be like if your portfolio is just all, all over the place there's some pictures of some piercings or tattoos or if somebody's doing both and then it's some hobby related pictures in there and then it's some memes and all that so it's no problem to crack a joke but maybe leave it to your friends because if you want to keep your page professional you don't want to post like look at my work and then next thing you're laughing about some customer related stuff and being all pro about it you can have a quick look at my instagrams i have two profiles one is tattoo related which i which i'm trying to keep all just tattoo related and a bit of this channel thing and the other one is more my private stuff and some piercing related stuff if you see my instagram page which is about tattoos then i keep i'm keeping it only about tattoos and this channel and the other one is my more private profile which is like family friends and i have a lot of piercing and some modification stuff in there but if you look at it you can't really tell because that's all over the place and you can't tell is that guy doing piercings or he's a guy who have a kid and family and all that that's two examples how it can be all over the place and more consistent and also what matters is like overall like theme of the portfolio of that page so it's more like technical stuff but all the pictures when they look the same or similar they look a lot better so it's it's same contrast it's same saturation it's not like one picture is super bright another one is black and white third one have some crazy filter on it's okay to adjust pictures but it gets weird when it's too much filters or too much heavy editing because it looks like it's sometimes you can't really tell what's happening because it's some especially with people who are doing that dark style and it's dark background that it's all like that you have to really try hard to understand what's going on in there or if it's too filtered up or it's too boosted or something it sometimes may look like you are trying to hide something some mistakes or errors or something like that or in the worst case you're just a tasteless person and no one wants to be a tasteless person so yeah over editing might look suspicious so be careful with going crazy with filters and editing and then obviously what's most important is the works itself so either it's piercings or tattoos it has to be a good job and you look at it and you you have to be able to tell what's going on there because if it's like some detailed piece and those details are important then snap another picture and put it in there so we can see that that detail is on that picture you don't have to zoom in you don't have to think about why that picture is so weird or why it's only this corner taking if it's like piercings then if it's some awesome piece of jewelry then maybe make a separate like a close-up picture of that jewelry and then show how it looks in in the ear also it's nice to see those happy piercings that it's not like all swollen like right after piercing with some blood around it because you can see a lot of them as well and it it doesn't it doesn't make you want to go to that place or to that practitioner because because it looks scary and painful also if it's like some flowy tattoo piece and it's important to see how it flows on a body don't be shy snap another picture so so people can understand what's what's meant to be in that picture and why we're looking at it and that's about it i hope it will improve somebody's look on portfolios on their own portfolios or how they look on other people portfolios i hope it wasn't too technical and i hope some of you find it useful or at least entertaining if there's something that i forgot to mention and that's really important let me know down below in comment section and thanks for watching